Hey everyone, so this is the um, part two of the fifth video in, reg in regards to this Trans 101 series. We're still talking about terminology. This video is mostly going to focus on um, terms relating to trans marginalization. <coughs> but just really quickly before we move on to that, a lot of people get the trans man and trans woman mixed up. And I want to be clear that when you're typing out these words, there is a space between the beginning right, of the next word. Right, because trans men and trans women are men and women who happen to be trans, not some new breed of, you know, men and women. Alright, so remember how when we define trans or someone who is of transgender experience, we defined it as someone who is of a different gender than what they were given at birth, right? So I think a lot of people think that trans men are women and that trans women are men. Um, no. <laughs> so someone who, someone who was gendered female at birth but identifies as a man today, right now, is a trans man. Someone who was gendered male at birth but identifies as a woman right now, in this moment, currently, is a trans woman. Okay. Someone who was gendered male at birth is not a trans man. Okay, someone who was gendered female at birth is not a trans woman. That's mis that's misgendering. That's given that's giving someone the wrong gender. No nobody likes that. <laughs> and by nobody I mean most people don't like that. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> so moving on. We're gonna define cis sexism next and compare it to transphobia. I don't like the term transphobia, and the reason is because of the phobia part. A lot of people um, debate on this because the phobia here is a suffix, meaning that it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as phobia as an isolated word, right? But when we use a term, we not only use its dictionary definition, we also use its cultural definition. So at the point in time where people are refusing to acknowledge that the cultural definition of transphobia is relating to fear, and, and the literal definition, too, then we're refusing to acknowledge the word itself, right? So transphobia connotes that there is, that it's out of your control, that you hate somebody, that you hate an entire group of people, that you actively work to keep them down because you can't, you can't help it. That's bullshit. Transphobia is the irrational hate and fear of trans people. Um, the thing with phobias is that phobias are intense. They are often panic attack inducing, emotional breakdown inducing. They are often physically debilitating. I have never met someone who is cis-sexist, and we'll get into exactly what that means in a moment. I've never met someone who is cis-sexist that has had a panic attack because of my presence. Um, but yeah, so cissexism is the notion that cisgender people are more valid, more normal, more real, regular, you know, and such and so forth than trans people. That trans people are less normal. That trans people are abnormal. That trans people are not as good. That trans people are a fluke. That we are unnatural, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. So remember when we talked about the difference between normative and normal? Cis sexism is the idea that comes out of making cisgender people normative. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm 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 gonna pretend that you said yes. <laughs> If you didn't say yes, then ask me, and I will definitely clear that up. Right, so, oh shoot, I should have erased that. So people who perpetuate the notion that cissexism, or rather perpetuate cissexism, are cissexist, or they are doing cissexist things, or saying cissexist things, right? So another form of marginalization within the trans community. So keep in mind that trans is an umbrella term, right? So in this case, cissexism affects all of all trans people. 
but then there, and we're going to go into what these terms mean, but then there is binarism, and then there is transmisogyny. So we'll get a, we're going to go over what transmisogyny means right now. <coughs> Transmisogyny looks like this, literally. Um, right, so it's misogyny directed towards trans women, if that makes sense. Uh, that's a very, very limited definition. I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> Transmisogyny is a term, it's the only term that I know of that combines two forms of oppression into one because it's very it's very specific and isolated. Um, it is the oppression and marginalization of trans people who were gendered male at birth. Um, so remember how we were talking about how like and trigger warning um, trans women and, and trans people who were gendered male at birth. I'm about to use like yeah. Remember how we were talking about how the T word affects, or is a trans-misogynistic term, right, and how it doesn't affect all trans people, but rather an isolated group of trans people. Um, this is why, because it's ironic because, like, in, like, in terms of sexism, people who are gendered female at birth are, are marginalized, right, but only if they continue to agree with that assignment, right, so, like, trans women are marginalized more so than trans men are. Trans men often have access to male privilege. Trans men have access to being gendered female at birth privilege, <coughs> which is complicated. Um, it's all, it's all very, like, it's convoluted and, you know, wavy and such and so forth. Uh, there's no right singular answer. But anyway, trans misogyny is very real. Um, and, like, for example, trans misogyny does not directly affect me. I actually benefit from the existence of trans misogyny, which is sad and disgusting um, that it exists. Uh, but examples of trans misogyny are the fact that every single year at Trans Day of Remembrance, the majority of the people that we remember are trans women. The majority of trans people who are murdered, who are assaulted, who are raped, are trans women, um, not trans men, and not generally people who are gendered or female at birth. Uh, that's not to say that our marginalization as, tra as trans people does not like does not exist. It's not to say that we don't get assaulted because we do. But the difference between us and trans women is exponential, exponential, um, in terms of likelihood of being hurt for our genders. Um, so yeah, so we've gone over cis sexism, we've gone over trans misogyny, let's go over binarism. Just really quickly, you want to check the time. Okay, cool. Alright, so binarism is a form of discrimination that is outside and within the trans community. It can affect other forms too. So like, for example, binarism exists within the LGB community as well. The notion that bisexual people need to pick a side of the fence, that's binarism. That you have to pick one of the binary. There is no middle, right? And that either of these two options is what's best. If you exist anywhere else, you're not as good. You're not as normal, right? So, in terms of the trans community specifically, remember how we talked about non-binary folks, it's the discrimination against non-binary identified folks, so people who identify as genderqueer, and we're not going to get into like all the definitions of all the identities that would take forever, um, people who identify as genderqueer, gender fluid, age gender, bi-gender, etc., etc., are affected by binarism, regardless of gender assignment, or um, regardless of what they were gendered at birth. Uh, so yeah, I recognize that this is pretty fast and it's like complicated and such and so forth and a lot of, a lot of trans men are going to be pissed off at this video because we discussed trans misogyny, but I don't care. Um, you all need to check your privilege and you all need to be aware of marginalization and how you benefit from that. Just because you're trans does not mean that 
all trans people are affected equally. Um, we're not. Um, but yeah, anyways. So, if you have any questions, you can email me, ira.d, as in dog, dot gray, g-r-a-y, at gmail.com. Um, you can go to my blog, www.iradalton, d-a-l-t-o-n, gray, dot com. If you want to ask me a question there, forward slash ask. Um, let's see. You can message me on Facebook, as always. You can comment on the YouTube video. Um, I always answer every question, uh, and I like to think that I'm pretty nice in general. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for sticking around for like 20 minutes now. I will talk to you all later, and see ya!